So at the top of the site here we've got some water storage but we're also making fertilizer for plants. Now you've probably come across the method where you shove a lot of leaves, maybe nettles or comfrey in a bin like this and fill it up with water and leave it for a few weeks and uh, it makes a very rich, tasty, perhaps is a good word, um, feed for plants but it really stinks because the process of digestion, the decomposition occurs anaerobically and that means without oxygen. Um, so it's a really simple way of doing things but it's also not a very nice way. It's, you know, once you've used it on your plants it gets in your skin, you can't sort of wash it off, you don't want to see it in your friends for a few days. So uh, my preferred method for making a liquid feed from plants is an aerobic method and that's what we're doing here. There's no water involved and there are certain benefits to this uh, including that it doesn't smell in the same way. So uh, this is one that we started literally about two and a half weeks ago. We filled it with nettles. It's early in the spring so nettles is what we have at the moment. Comfrey is not quite getting going but it will be in a few weeks time we'll have some of that and nettles makes a nitrogen rich feed which is particularly good for things like cucumbers but at this time of year potatoes uh, anything that's making greens it's good to give a good dose of nitrogen feed occasionally and uh, it's a very tasty looking stuff oops as you can see so here don't know how well you can see that from there but essentially that's what we've collected from about two and a half weeks ago, just putting fresh nettles in, putting a weight on it, letting it drip through and collecting the liquid at the bottom. And I'm going to show you how we make one of these um, from stuff that most people would just throw away. So this is a bunch of stuff that people might have thrown away that I've scavenged around and about the place that I'm going to use to make this fertility bin. And the first thing you might notice is there's a hole at the bottom and not only is there a, a hole, a normal hole, there's a split. Obviously it's got bashed and this has been thrown away because it leaks from the bottom. Now, from our perspective, for making this project, if you were trying to make a bin that you wanted to fill with water and do an anaerobic mix, the smelly one, this would be useless. But to make an aerobic bin, which is going to have no water in it, apart from the little bit of rain that comes in the top, maybe adding a bit of uh, watering the top, just uh, during dry periods but apart from that it's not going to be full of liquid so it doesn't it doesn't matter that there's a hole at the bottom there so so we got a water bucket that someone's thrown away um, we've got three old bricks which will go in the bottom so we're going to drill some holes in the bottom we'll put the bricks in there we're going to make a little filter out of some old chicken wire it's just an old bit of chicken wire that again could have been thrown away we just found it in the corner um, we've got a couple of wooden offcuts here, but this could easily be a couple of breeze blocks. You know, just something to hold the tank off the ground so that you can slide your collector underneath, like the one we see over here. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill some holes in the bottom, some drainage holes, so the liquid that's being made inside the, the butt can drain out and to drip out where we want it. So um, I'm looking for what are the highest points on the outside because that will be the lowest points on the inside. And from my experience with these butts, it seems to be either side of the seam. Maybe it's just a way that when water's been in them a while, it makes them sag a little bit about here. So along this line and this line, and also because my container is quite narrow, and this is just a little trough, for window boxes. Um, I want to make sure that I'm drilling the holes not beyond that. I don't want the liquid to drip out <laughs> either side of that. So I'm going to drill my holes so that um, generally in a line so that the liquid drips through into the container I have. So let's do that. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've done that job. Um, makes lots of pretty plastic spirals. Not sure what to do with those. Anyway, they're going in the pocket for now. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over. And yes, hopefully it's fairly obvious that what's going to happen is that it will sit a couple of these, like that. What I've done over here is to put them fairly close to the sides of my collecting trough. Obviously yours could be wider. Um, or washing up bowl or something like that would be just as good. What I don't want to do is to line the holes up with what's underneath and then take this out one day. So if these are further apart, I took this out and then put it back and it's not un directly underneath the holes. So I'm putting these close enough together that I know exactly where the holes are and where that needs to go. So this will sit on top of there Obviously, I'll make sure that they're lined up. And then the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to put these three bricks in. Easier to show you outside, really, than to do it inside. Well, I'll show you a photo. So they'll look a bit like this inside, or they could be on edge like that. Doesn't really matter as long as they're stable. And then what, what I'm going to do is to Take this and make a nice little sort of filter, disc filter with it. So the purpose of this is to simply to um, keep the bulk of the leaves from clogging up the holes in the bottom of the tank. So when we get that off there, so the leaves will sit on top of this filter, and as they decay, the liquids will drop through and into the collecting bowl here, to the collecting bowl, and uh, the leaves, the, the bulk of the rest of the leaves will stay on top and from time to time we'll just take them out and put them on the compost to dry matter. Okay, so what I need to do now is just get a sense of the size of the inside of that and I'm going to fold this up to make um, a little bit of a filter mesh out of this old chicken wire. Okay, I've made my filter. Uh, what I've done is folded it enough that it will go slightly up the sides as well because that's flexible that will go in the top hole here uh, so the next bit is easier to do um, not up on the blocks um, because you have to lean right in and so what we're going to do is just pop the bricks down in so. pops a bit of really good in there goes in on top. Like that. And we can pop this back on our base, making sure the holes are lined up. Lovely. And now all we've got to do is to fill it with whatever leaves we have. So for me, at this time of year, obviously nettles are abundant. There's a field we have access to where we can go and cut. Um, because the animals don't eat them. Uh, so we go and cut nettles and this bin was completely stuffed full of nettles. It was about seven or eight trugs full, um, compressed down two and a half weeks ago and you've seen how much liquid <laughs> has come out the bottom and the actual, the nettles themselves now are only filling half of the tub. So one of the advantages of this method, which you can't do when you fill a, a bin with leaves and water, is you can keep adding to it. This is a continuous process as it goes down. You can just add more on top. Whereas the other version, you have to wait until it's ready and empty and then do another batch. And you don't have to fill this all in one go. You put in whatever you have in the way of leaves. And what we do is to give them a good squeezing. So we just need some kind of board or plate on the top. As it turns out, these old plastic tray saucers 
fit perfectly in the hole, so I've just been using these for the moment. Um, always bear in mind that if you're using a tapering bin that's this shape, that the plate you use will go most of the way down, otherwise it'll get so far and it will just get wedged, which might be difficult to get out, but it certainly won't be squeezing the material anymore. So this goes in and it just needs something on top to give it a bit of a squeeze. So uh, a stone, something like that, per works perfectly. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that when you next add some things to your bin, this will be quite a long way down, perhaps. You know, it might be all the way down here and the stone might be down here. Um, so don't put anything that's so heavy that it would be really difficult to lift out again. If you want to put a lot of weight on, then I would recommend putting several stones or bricks rather than just one, because then it's easier to get those out afterwards. Um, and it's as simple as that, really. It's just leave it alone. We've had some hot weather, um, which is good, because that basically helps the decomposition as long as you add a bit of moisture, because bacteria need some moisture to break down, but they don't need to be underwater. And uh, with two, well, two and a half weeks of really quite hot weather, and a little bit of watering, we've got all that liquid feed. So it's a quite a fast turnaround in the summer months. And of course, the hotter it is, the more likely you are to need to feed your plants. So it all works very well. And as long as you get started early on, then you've got feed ready for your plants uh, when they need it. So it's turned a bit wet and windy. We've had a day of rain and uh, it's washed through the tub quite nicely. So we've collected a lot more in the container at the bottom. Uh, in fact, it's the ideal recipe, really, having a, a couple of weeks of sun to really give some heat and get the decomposition going, as long as you're adding a little bit of water um, and then a good rinse through. So we've got a full five litres in there and another, well, pretty much two and a half in there, just collected this morning. Um, and what I'm going to do is do some feeding. So the potatoes, our first early potatoes in particular, um, have a little tinges of yellow around. They're obviously wanting a feed. We've got some rhubarb which we've been harvesting and that probably wants to be fed as well. So what I'm going to do is dilute this down. Obviously you don't use, it, you don't use this neat. Um, I'm going to start with one of the liquid to about 20 of water. And the size of the watering can makes this quite a simple sum. Uh, this is nine litres, this holds. So if I add about half a litre, just under half a litre, that's about one of these to 20 of water. And I think that's a good starting place. Um, you could up it to about one to 10 of water at some point, but um, I'm gonna start at one to 20, see how that gets on. So just going to fill this up. That's about half a litre. Very rich. Just going to pour that in there and just give it a little bit more water just to stir it up a bit. There we are. And now I'm ready to go. So to recap, nettles are good for things that need a lot of nitrogen like cucumbers and potatoes and such. Um, plants like tomatoes and peppers and aubergines um, prefer a liquid feed made more with comfrey, for instance, and that's something that we'll be using this bin for fairly soon, but our comfrey plants are not quite ready yet to be harvested. And, and of course you can just put anything. So, Essentially, if you're just wanting to make a general liquid feed and you're weeding around the garden, if you've got healthy plants um, that you would consider to be weeds, you don't want to eat them or use them in the garden, but they're growing well, that means that they've got the nutrients they need, which also means they'll make a great liquid feed. So as long as they're not full of seeds, just you can pull them out, put them in the bin, liquefy them over a period of weeks, and use those nutrients to then feed the plants that you're growing.